The New Arab, 14th of February 2024, Why So Hopeless China's Recognition of the Taliban Is Getting Closer China is trying to establish land links, and Afghanistan is a cost-effective solution. It also wants to stop an anti-Chinese insurgency from originating in Afghanistan. China has become the first significant nation to take substantial action over the legal legitimacy of the newly elected Afghan government, more than two years after the Taliban raid took power in that country. China's President Xi Jinping has approved the Afghan representative's ambassador credentials after receiving an envoy from Kabul. Meeting the President of China conferred automatic partial formal recognition. According to the Foreign Ministry of Afghanistan, Malvi Asadullah, also known as Bilal Karimi, has been appointed Afghanistan's extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassador to China. Wang Wenbin, a spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry, explained that Beijing has always had diplomatic contacts with Kabul. He would not go so far as to say whether formal recognition had been granted, only that it was a normal diplomatic arrangement. Several regional governments, including China, Pakistan, and Russia, have kept their embassies in Kabul ever since the Taliban took control of the city. In the meantime, the Taliban progressively took over other Afghan diplomatic posts overseas, particularly those in neighboring nations. Because of this, the Afghan Taliban have embassies in 14 nations, including Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Pakistan, even though these states do not recognize their authority. The Taliban's demand for acceptance. Since assuming power in Kabul, the Taliban's top leadership has made no secret of its desire for official status. In its initial period of rule, 1996 to 2000, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, which founded and funded the Taliban, and the United Arab Emirates recognized the group. The Taliban were an unproven force at the time, but this time around, their brutal reputation preceded them. As a result of their abuses of human rights, no nation has offered to recognize the authority formally. The regime is the target of political and economic sanctions from the US and the EU. The Taliban leadership wanted Islamabad to take the initiative because of its stronger links to Pakistan, which is its neighbor, but Islamabad opted to wait for a regional decision. Meanwhile, the majority of nations with a plurality of Muslims disapproved of the Taliban's views on women's rights. To make matters worse, relations between Pakistan and Afghanistan have been deteriorating lately due to militant assaults inside Pakistan from across the border with Afghanistan, which are then followed by Islamabad's expulsion of unregistered Afghan refugees to handle the security situation. Pakistan's delay in granting recognition was purportedly one of the reasons why the Taliban lost interest in suppressing terrorists. Pakistan subsequently said that it would not advocate the Afghan Taliban's case at the international level unless the group reigns in terrorist elements, downgrading its involvement with the Taliban. The Taliban suffered a blow from Islamabad's position, which had previously backed Kabul's position. Foreign recognition might lead to lifting sanctions on the Taliban government and give it access to $7 billion in assets held by the state bank. In this context, Beijing has informed other governments that the Afghan Taliban maintains unquestionable control over the country and that the international community cannot isolate it. China's Involvement in Afghanistan China, one of Afghanistan's six central neighbors and a mighty nation, has set an example for other countries by formally recognizing the Afghan Taliban administration, indicating to them that it is heading away from the West. Beijing might strengthen its soft influence in Afghanistan with this audacious move. The Taliban's principal spokesperson, Zabi Hala Mujahid, wrote on X that China has understood what the rest of the world has not. He continued, saying, We are not in a unipolar world, and he urged Russia, Iran, and other nations to do the same. However, the extent to which Beijing's support materializes remains to be seen. 
China is pursuing its course with the AF Taliban and will continue to provide them with tiny gifts to maintain their trust until a regional consensus is reached. International relations specialist Aram Ashraf wrote on X that until then, China would continue to operate as an interim government with no new initiatives revealed. Naveed Ali Sheikh, an Islamabad-based research scholar and military relations specialist, told the New Arab that he thinks China is attempting sincerely to normalize the relationship between the Taliban and Afghanistan. Afghan authorities have several agreements with other countries, for example, keeping a door open for India. Indian diplomats quickly returned to Afghanistan after a brief midnight evacuation on August 18, 2021, he told TNA. The Chinese authorities have started training programs and courses for the Afghan side. Beijing has also eliminated the chance that Afghan territory will be used against it by intensifying its engagement with the Taliban. All of Afghanistan's neighbors are worried about the many terrorist organizations that are present throughout the country, remarkably close to its borders. Beijing's top goal is preventing security threats from a chaotic Afghanistan since both the US and Russia have expressed concern about international terrorist organizations operating there. Interestingly, Beijing made contact with Kabul during a turbulent period for Islamabad, Beijing's all-weather friend and its northwest neighbor. It is plausible that Beijing chose to fill Islamabad's void because it did not want other nations to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. China might initiate bilateral counter-terrorism cooperation and involvement with Afghanistan as needed by aggressively interacting with the Taliban and increasing its influence over the regime. Beijing had even asked the previous Afghan administration for assistance because it was worried about the East Turkestan Islamic Movement ETIM. China's primary goal is to stop terrorists from infiltrating its Xinjiang region from Afghanistan. Beijing is also interested in mining, manufacturing, services, and agriculture. Afghanistan has essential mineral resources that Chinese businesses need, such as copper, lithium, and rare earth elements. Afghanistan can be a strategic link between China and West and Central Asia. The present Afghan government has been preparing to open up the Waikan Corridor to China for travel by road. This route might be less time-consuming than the Karakoram Highway from Pakistan. To boost trade ties, Beijing has been attempting to expand the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC, the centerpiece of the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, to Afghanistan. Research scholar and military relations specialist Naveed Ali Sheikh told TNA that the Chinese were quick to reach out to the Taliban after the fall of Ashraf Ghani's government due to delays in CPEC projects and security issues from Afghan soil. They sought to investigate the possibility of using the Indian-built Route 606 or NH-49, a 218-kilometer route that connected Zarang, Afghanistan, to Delam. Afghanistan, and then to the port of Chabahar, Iran. The first Afghan shipment to China occurred in October 2021 and, surprisingly, consisted of 40 tons of pine nuts that required airlifting. The Chinese were also interested in establishing a land transport route. Although China was willing to invest in Afghanistan, it took a cautious approach to avoid suffering losses. Only one-third of the promised cash materialized, despite a Chinese energy business investing $49 million in Afghanistan's oil production last year, helping to increase the country's daily crude oil output to almost 1,100 metric tons. According to Andrew Scoble, distinguished fellow for China at the United States Institute of Peace, there is considerable Chinese wariness about the internal security situation, the reliability of Taliban assurances regarding foreign investments, and Afghanistan's poor infrastructure, even though, China is, attracted to, Afghanistan's, mining and energy resources. Sheikh pointed out other problems with the China-Taliban relationship by pointing out that China's Xinjiang Central Asia Petroleum and Gas Company, Capice, 
signed a 25-year exploration deal with the Taliban and expressed interest in the American-abandoned Amu Darya oil and gas fields in western Afghanistan. The Chinese realized for the first time that the Taliban were not naive because they had given false figures and overstated expenditures. Beijing withheld grants for several months after noticing disparities. Then, a few security incidents involving Chinese nationals in Nadariala were orchestrated to pressure Beijing. Participation from abroad. To promote coordinated international engagement with the Taliban government, the UN Security Council has authorized the UN Secretary General to designate a special envoy for Afghanistan. Kabul, however, is not pleased with this approach and has protested to the appointment, stating that the UN should no longer view Afghanistan as an anomaly within the international community. China is currently on good terms with the Afghan rulers, but the Taliban prefers normal diplomatic relations with other nations. Chinese influence over Afghanistan's foreign policy, economy, and political climate will probably keep growing over the coming days.